Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got some really interesting bodybuilding updates and the first one is about Samson Daura, so we are 12 days, guys, only 12 days out of Arnold Classic 2024 and this is what Samson Daura, the defending champ and probably the only guy who can actually beat Hari Chopin in this show, this is what he looks like right now and there are a couple of very interesting things about this physique update, so the first thing is conditioning. Now, in my previous video about Samson Daura, I said that it seems like he is not really bringing something new. And they said, they kind of promised that him and Milos Archev are gonna try and bring something new to the table, something new, a new level of conditioning. And in Samson's previous physique update, which was at exactly two weeks out, he looked like his usual self. I thought he was gonna look better than the Mr. Olympia, a little bit drier, a little bit more conditioned, but I didn't think he was gonna bring something new, something that we haven't seen before. Based on this physique update, I said he's probably bringing something close to Arnold Classic last year. However, this new physique update at 12 days out looks a little bit different. First of all, his legs. I mean, have his legs ever been this detailed? this dry? Was he ever this separated? I mean, his legs are not really a problem area, his quads are always in good condition, but this time around they kind of seem drier than usual, right? I mean, there are so many feathers, like cross striations, everything looks super dry, super, super hard, so I think this is new. I don't think it was ever like this before, and once again we are 12 days, out so there is an entire peak week and some more days on top of that to dry him out to carb him up to pick him for the show so maybe he's gonna look even better of course there is always a possibility of spilling over we know at this point that only conditioning doesn't win shows you need fullness as well that's just how it is today in open bodybuilding, fullness, size is definitely a very very important criteria, so maybe in the process of carving up he is gonna get a little bit smoother, but even though Milos Archer is like a big carb up guy, he's really heavy on carbs and insulin and carving up for the shows, he said himself that Samson doesn't need to be carved up heavily to look full, he always has that kind of full and round muscle, so he doesn't need to do that, so if they can cruise with this kind of shape, maybe dry out a little bit the last day, then this can be like a better package than ever. The other thing, also Samson's strong body part, his chest, not only in terms of development and, and fullness and size, but also in terms of details, you know, separation, his chest now, I think it looks drier and harder and definitely more separated than ever. I mean, maybe it's like the lighting or some kind of a filter or something like that, but Samson is always taking photos at this exact spot, and it never looked like this. I don't think he ever showed this kind of separation in his chest, this kind of hardness in details. So this is something new, it really seems like at this point that Samson is bringing something that we never saw so far, you know, a new level, a next level of conditioning for Samson. Now, I don't want to only praise Samson, I mean, if I'm picking him apart, I gotta show the, the flaws as well. And really, the only flaw that I see in this video is uh, Samson's midsection. His gut is starting to show, finally. So he grew a lot of size and he kept a very small waist, but yeah, finally it's catching up with him. I mean, hopefully the, the control is gonna be better on stage, but yeah, you can definitely see it right here in this video. Also, the separation between the abs in the middle, like the one uh, Ronnie Coleman had or that Keon Pearson is having now, it's called diastasis and Samson is starting to have problems with that. It was there before, it was visible back in 2020 at the Mr. Olympia right here, you can see it a little, but it wasn't as bad as it is today, so it definitely progressed, it got worse. But I mean, if you get this big, like he's 300 pounds and he's actually much bigger now than he was at this year's Mr. Olympia, take a look at the shoulders, at the triceps and the chest as well, I think he progressed a lot in that area, especially shoulders. So he's much bigger now, and his back also improved a lot. And, you know, certain side effects are expected. Like, uh, Hari Japan maybe won't have uh, this, this issue because, you know, he's like 230, maybe. Derek Lansford, too. I mean, yeah, they're shorter, but they're not that much shorter to be 70 pounds lighter. 
they just have great illusion, great details, shape and structure, stuff like that, that makes them look bigger than they really are. Samson is actually big, he's actually heavy, he's enormous, so as he has gotten bigger, certain things happened. His diastasis has gotten worse and his stomach grew a little, but it's not really something he cannot control. You know, if he controls his midsection and he does a lot of vacuum in many poses, he's gonna be fine, it's not gonna be a big issue, but it was definitely more aesthetic before and next to Hadi, it may be exposed. So, you know, I don't wanna praise Samson only, if I see something uh, that's not good about him, I'm gonna point it out and yeah, there is that. You guys tell me down below, what do you think? Alright, next up, we got a little physique update from James Honishead at two weeks out of Arnold Classic and... You know, as far as body fat percent, James is kind of uh, cruising for the past two or three weeks. I don't think his conditioning has gotten any better. In fact, it may have even gotten a little bit worse. Because, you know, he said that he was ready. He felt like he was ready at like a five weeks out mark. And he decided to just cruise. And I think he is much fuller now. He looked really flat during his prep, especially in the early phases. Now he looks bigger, fuller, as Ant Bales in the comment section says he looks about 290, and yeah, I can see that, I mean in the reply here he says 291, I think he's joking, I don't think he's 291, he was like 270 something when he was completely depleted, so yeah, I believe he went up a couple of pounds, maybe he's like 2, 280, maybe, <laughs> he's not impossible, he does look enormous here, uh, do I see the details that I want to see? You know, it, it's okay, like, it's he's not super detailed, super shredded, but that's just his genetics, or his style of training, or whatever, whatever it is, that's his physique, you know, he doesn't have the most separated, the most deeply separated physique ever, like, he's no Hari Japan, he has what he has, that's, like, you know, he has certain hardness, and, you know, he's big, he's really massive, he's thick, but he's not exactly the most separated guy in the IFBB right now, but yeah, the conditioning looks good, take a look at the chest, like that left pack that is close to the camera, you can see some fibers in the lower chest, and overall his chest looks really dry, you know, shoulders looking really dry, so yeah, he's in a good condition, I think uh, Milos' uh, peak week is gonna be the determining factor here uh, of how good James is gonna look, because I don't think he peaked well, in a long freaking time, and now that he has Milos in his corner, I think the peak week is gonna be done properly, and if it's done right, he can actually be, like, really good, and he posts a lot of crazy training videos, like, he's two weeks out less than, and he's lifting like a maniac, he's doing this kind of, I don't know, deadlifts with constant tension, he's doing a lot of heavy rows, but, like, really, really heavy rows, People are criticizing him for training that way, but, you know, he knows his body, he has always done this kind of stuff. Uh, what I'm more curious when I'm looking at this video is what his back looks like. And, you know, the guy is, like, not known for the best uh, width. He's kind of narrow in the back. A lot of thickness, especially in the spinal uh, erectors and, like, the trapezes, but as far as the lats and just the width... His shoulders are narrow, structurally, sure, but his lats are not the thickest, the biggest, the widest lats. And I think he could benefit more from, you know, doing more isolation type of work at this point in his career, more pull-down stuff, you know, really trying to hit that lat. Uh, instead, he's doing stuff like this. And it is very attractive for social media, I love to see it, it's, it's really hardcore. And I'm sure this is how he has gotten this big. With this kind of mindset, with being this strong, with lifting super heavy weight, but maybe at this point in his career he should focus more on the details, on improving the weak body parts, instead of just lifting as, as heavy as possible and just trying to get as massive, because, you know, overall mass is not an issue for the guy, details, details, separation, that's what he's lacking, so... Maybe at this point of his career, a different training style, a little bit of a switch would benefit him, but maybe not, maybe he would just lose all the size and uh, he would look like a classy guy, <laughs> I don't think that would happen, but maybe this is the way he likes to do things, and this is the, the only way that he knows how to do it, and I don't think he's gonna change it, you know, it got him to where he is today, and he's one of the top pros today, 
we'll see how much of a top pro he actually is, because this Arnold Classic could be like a breakthrough show for him, if he places like in the top 3, that would really send a message to the bodybuilding world that he's coming, that he's kind of up there, you know, but is that gonna happen? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, personally, I'm not really betting on it. I'm definitely betting rather on Rafael Brandau and Horse MD. I think James is gonna have a hard time, you know, battling for that fifth spot, but I could be totally wrong. Maybe this guy is actually gonna be top three. What do you guys think? Tell me down below. All right, now we have a very interesting physique update from John De La Rosa, and I believe this guy is one of those guys who is probably gonna be battling for that top five spot he could be one of the guys that beats James Hollingshead, at least in my eyes. Maybe you guys have James in a very firm third spot. Personally, I think James is gonna have to battle to be in that top five, and this guy might take him out. So John De La Rosa right now looks like this, and I'm showing you this photo because this is a comparison between his last year's edition. Actually, he was two weeks out of Tampa Pro where he placed second to Hunter Labrada, the best version of Hunter Labrada, and this is what he looked like on the left, so that was last year. Now, he looks like this, on the right, much, much better, much, much leaner, and 10 pounds heavier. And this is what he looked like next to the top 6 Olympian, Hunter Labrada. Hunter was 6th at the Mr. Olympia, but Tampa Pro, this show right here, was his absolute best conditioning ever. He did not bring it like this on a Mr. Olympia stage. If he did, if he did, in my opinion, he would be fourth. He would be fourth, he would beat Brandon Curry. That's the way I see it. But he didn't. However, he looked amazing at this show, and John De La Rosa stood next to him, and he didn't lose a lot of ground. You know, he was very comparable. Legs are the area where he was destroyed by Hunter, but upper body, it was actually pretty close, right? Sure, you could say he also lost to Justin Shire, who was uh, dead last at Mr. Olympia. Actually, he wasn't last. Phil Lahar was last, but the guy is like 50-something years old. And Ross Flanning was behind because he was disqualified. He didn't show up for the finals, but I think he was uh, ahead of Justin. So, yeah, I mean, Justin beat him here, John. He beat John, and he was almost the last guy at Mr. Olympia. So, you know, that second to Hunter doesn't necessarily mean much, but it's just the way he looked next to Hunter, and how much better he looks right now, and there is no Hunter at the, at the Arnold Classic, I mean, there are only two guys at the Arnold Classic who beat Hunter, and that's uh, Samson Dauda and Hari Chopin, everybody else, man, it's a fair game, you know, John can take them out, it's not impossible, he can be one of the guys in the top five, or even as high as Third? Is that possible? I mean, I don't see it personally because of the lags. Those lags from the front are really throwing me off. I don't like his quads, but I definitely could be wrong. He has a lot of strong points and he's in a really good condition and he's much, much improved. And he has really that kind of crazy round 3D shape. Patrick Tour is his coach and Patrick knows how to pick his guys lately. So yeah, we'll see. It's going to be very interesting, but John De La Rosa is definitely a wild card. And that is gonna do it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this about bodybuilding, guys, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.